Hello everyone and welcome back to the homestead. I feel like I owe you a little bit of an explanation on what happened at the end of that last video. We're gonna take a walk down to the pigs right now and I'll show you kind of what's going on. So in that video, we got the area that you see here all cleaned up. we darkening a little bit. All cleaned up from the turkey growing. We also got a new shelter for the pigs built. Temp you know, some shelter, not. Um, it had a roof on it, it had all sorts of stuff. As you can see, a piece of the shelter is now over there. Um, this is all banged up, the roof is no more. It is right here on the ground behind me. Pigs destroy everything. And this made it not even, this made it not even six hours. So that is on my list of things to fix today. The second thing we ran into was the pig water froze, which we kind of expected. So we have this, um, a heated stock tank, a, a stock tank heater. But we ran into the issue that even with the stock tank heater cranking in here, uh, these nipples were still freezing up and I had to come out and I was actually hitting them with a blowtorch every couple hours to, to get these things thawed. Which is not good for pigs that need to drink more frequently. It's not fair to them to find, you know, frozen nipples out here. So nobody likes frozen nipples. Because the issue I was running into was not necessarily that the water inside was freezing, but that the water inside wasn't keeping the nipples warm enough to keep the, the convection or conduction, it's conduction, not convection, the conduction uh, of the metal nipple on the outside of the barrel, that cold kind of traveling along the metal and inside and freezing up on the inside there. So I went to Tractor Supply. And I grabbed this thing. which is a stock tank heater that is designed to be submersible so I can put it very close to the inside of the nipples um, and keep them from freezing up. But it's also designed for a 300 gallon stock tank. So um, much heavier duty in terms of, of keeping things thawed. So hopefully this will alleviate the problem. The water actually in there is, is almost lukewarm, which is kind of crazy. We are running into a frozen hose issue, which is not the end of the world. I'm gonna walk up the hose, I'm gonna crack it and try to get um get stuff moving. If not, we do have another hose. That should be long enough. We have another hose over there that I can bring inside, thaw completely, and then bring out and hook up and hopefully use that. And then we'll just have to um, shuttle it in and out. I'll take it inside at night, bring it out in the daytime, which is a pain, but we're not supposed to have the pigs this long, which I'll explain now. So the pigs are still here. Uh, timing on the pigs is unknown at this point. We've kind of got no, no direction from the butcher aside from he's hoping to have the power turned back on to the shop that he's renovating by Thanksgiving and he's got 30 to 40 pigs ahead of us. I have spoken with a friend who lives up the street who was going to be sending 18 pigs to the same butcher. Her processing date was early in October and she still hasn't sent her pigs. And I don't think she has a date yet. I actually just shot her a text message as she said, uh, second week in December for her and she was October 5th. That puts us into January, an extra month and a half, two months almost to feed for them. So that's been the stressful situation in my neck of the woods this week as a small farmer. I don't think, I fed the pigs really early this morning and they didn't get up. There's only two down there. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a bucket of corn in the tractor and walk it down there. And if they see me with the tractor, maybe they'll realize that there's food in the trough. Oh, squirrels! Squirrels love the corn. At least they're not chewing into the pig feed, I guess. With pig feed as expensive as it is this year, that would be super sucky. Yeah, I'm not happy about this. They were just, there was a pig out here breaking through the ice to try and drink water that had collected from last time it rained. Um, this sucks, I'm not happy. On the plus side, all of the turkeys have been picked up for customers for the year, so that's nice. There are still a few at my friend's place. Uh, they're getting done tomorrow and those will be for us. Yeah, there's no way that's gonna thaw today. Um, my next project then. Sorry about that, I got distracted. Um, I'm gonna go get the stuff to make a roof for this one again. I reinforced it, I put T-post down low. It's still janky, beyond belief, but it was never supposed to be there. They were supposed to be gone by now. As far as out here in the field, the pigs have actually been sleeping, mostly up there. Um, they've been trying to fit in their old shelter. We built them the new shelter. A couple slept in there last night. They've not been sleeping in this shelter. You can remember we built this shelter. I'll link the video in the corner. I don't know why they wouldn't have been using it. The only thing I can think of is that they don't like the open sides, which, which I guess makes sense. This was just supposed to be a rain shelter uh, back in October. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll get some plywood, cheap plywood, and I'll get enough where I can cover the sides, like do a line down the sides. And then I can just, I'll use strapping on the inside and I'll screw it to the plywood on the outside. And hopefully, 
if I do that and maybe put a row of pallets along the back with T-posts holding them in, um, they'll use this shelter as their primary shelter because it's big enough. I do have a line potentially on some porta huts over in Vermont. I need to get back to the guy that was selling them. Those would be great. I was hoping we wouldn't need them for this year, but with the pigs potentially being here for another month, um, month and a half, I want to give them, you know, a solid level of protection. So I may jump on those. With the holiday this week though, Thanksgiving's on Thursday, I wouldn't be able to get up to Vermont until this coming weekend, which, you know, is longer than I want to wait. All right. We're back from the big blue toolbox, AKA Lowe's. I got everything I need to do what I think I need to do. I'm gonna cut these two by four by eights. I'm gonna cut them in one foot sections. They're gonna be my scabbing on the inside for the metal roofing for the cattle panel greenhouse. Sorry, cattle panel pig shelter. And then I'm gonna try and throw a roof on the pig shelter that you're looking at that we built, that I rebuilt today. Sorry, I'm running around like crazy because it took me longer at Lowe's than I thought. And we actually had somebody show up uh, to pick up a turkey a little bit early. They were supposed to be here at 4. They got here at 3.30 and I was late because I was coming back from Lowe's. I was expecting, whatever. We're just going to do this. Hopefully this keeps them busy long enough to, uh, so I can do what I have to do. Okay, so I just wrapped up. I got it temporarily affixed, which um, for pigs might not be the smartest thing to do and leave it, but uh, but I'll show you what I got and then when I finish it tomorrow, because I do need help finishing it. So I've got the corrugated roofing on the side, kind of similar to like what a porta hut would be. It's actually held in place by the T-posts on the bottom. And for the top, I put roofing screws through and then just two by four scabs on the inside. And I've got two on each of these right now. But tomorrow I'll come back and add like four more across each top. And then I'll add a few across the bottom as well. It's already made them feel a whole lot more at home, as you can tell. We've got a little bit of uh, pig on pig girl love going on back there. Ladies, please, inside the shelter, if you must. I've got to go inside and do some editing for what will have been the last video that you saw but is actually coming out tomorrow but what you're gonna see in this video is tomorrow me finishing up the other shelter so we'll cut to that now and we're back it is about three o'clock i worked six to two today we're gonna give the pigs some grain we're gonna get them distracted and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna put a roof on this shelter, the close shelter up here, the one they destroyed already. And hopefully they don't destroy it again. All right, in case you haven't figured it out already, as you know, all of my pig shelters go, uh, the plan here is basic. I've got 12 foot two by fours, three of them. I've got two eight foot sections. They look more like 10 foot sections. I've got two sections of just PVC corrugated roofing, super simple. I'm gonna lay the three 12 foot two by fours across the top. I'm gonna put the PVC roofing on top of that and that's it. We're just building a flat surface. The pigs are distracted, so I'm gonna set the camera down here and get to work before they wrap up the food that I gave them. Oh, you're coming over to check it out, huh? What do you think? You get a new shelter. All right, Ginger. You tell me. What do you think? We named this pig Ginger because when she was little, she had a little red tuft on her forehead. She's kind of grown out of it, but she's definitely one of the most social pigs we have. She's always kind of hanging around us if we're out here doing work. Right? 
She's still leery though. She knows what's happening. Why don't you test it out? Come on in. She's a little unsure of it. I think it's good though. We've got a roof, we've got three sides. They've already been sleeping un in it, not under it, because it didn't have a roof, but they've already been sleeping in it. Um, three, sometimes four will fit in here. Four have been trying to squeeze into that one, so it, it's been um, it's been loud <laughs> because they're all trying to get into one shelter and they're fighting over the, the space inside. So we've got their old shelter now from when they were piglets. We've got the shelter out in the field that we wrapped up yesterday. I may still put a back on that this weekend. Just line a couple pallets across the back and hammer some T-posts through so they can't push them over. And then we've got this shelter right here next to the piglet shelter. And I think between those three, it'll be, will be good. I would say pretty good turnaround. This video started and everything was, was going off the rails and I felt pretty, pretty, uh, pretty stressed out. But I think between just some kind of seat of the pants thinking and uh, a couple days of work, I think we'll be okay. I'm still not happy about having to keep the pigs here because it's definitely going to hurt the bottom line. When it comes to pork sales this year, I don't think we're going to make any money on pork this year, but that's just how it goes sometimes. But at least we know that our pigs, up until the time they do eventually make it to a butcher, wherever that ends up being, um, they're going to be warm, they'll be sheltered, they'll be dry, and they'll be happy because happy pork tastes better. If you like what you saw, make sure to head down below, hit that subscribe button, and as always, we thank you for watching and hope you're having a great day. Bye.